Hi, so far we talked about definition one of extreme values. At the beginning I said there are three definitions. I gave you three definitions. So in this video I'm going to start talking about definition two of extreme values. Right. You may recall that this is the picture that represents definition 2 of extreme values. So you have this blue line, which is a threshold denoted by U, and any data point that exceeds this line is referred to as an extreme value. So in this picture, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 extreme values. Each, day, each of the 11 has, has a value that is above the threshold. Right? So let me introduce some notation first. Suppose x denotes the variable of interest. So basically x is the data. And suppose U denotes the threshold. And if X is greater than U, then it is an extreme value. Now the question is, is the following, what is the, what is the distribution of X, right, what is the distribution of X when X is greater than U? You may recall that in definition one, we asked a similar question. Right? We asked what is the distribution of MN, right? And we that gave that question gave rise to the GEV distribution, right? Right. So we are asking a similar question here. Now there is a result. due to Pickens. Pickens is an American mathematician which says the following. Which says that if you look at the conditional probability of x minus u, right, given that x is greater than u, right, then this conditional probability approaches the following as u use the threshold up, approaches the upper end point of f and right, where f denotes the CDF of X, right? Now let me explain what this means. What, what you're looking at here, X minus U, is, the, is referred to as the excess amount. It's, in other words, it's the amount by which the data point has exceeded the threshold. Right, and this guy here, x greater than u, means that what the, I mean, as I already said, this means that x is an extreme 
12 here. Now that's what it means. Okay. Right, so if you go back to the picture, this is the picture I showed you. Now, x minus u is basically the, like if you take this data point, is the distance from this to this. And if you take this data point, is the distance from this to this. Right? So it's the amount by which the data point has exceeded the threshold. And what this result says is that the conditional probability of the excess amount, given that x is an extreme value, approaches this when u approaches the upper end point of f, right? And this result is very useful, as you will see in a minute. Now, usually the upper end point of f is infinity, but in practice, nothing can be infinite. So, so what I'm going to assume is the following. Suppose suppose u is large enough such that that the conditional probability x minus u given x is greater than u is approximately equal to the right hand side which is 1 plus okay. now in this right hand side that there are two parameters x minus i and they have the same meaning as the the two as the sigma and psi we saw under the GEV distribution. They have the same meaning and interpretation. So sigma is a scale parameter and psi is a is a shape parameter. Now I'm gonna show you how we can use this result to derive a distribution for X. So that's what I will do in the next slide. So starting with the statement that I just made implies the following. That the conditional probability you can you can write as the probability that x minus u is greater than x and x greater than u divided by the probability that x is greater than u. And this is approximately equal to approximately equal to this. Okay. Now this is the same as saying that the probability that x is greater than u plus x, x is greater than u, divided by the probability that x is greater than u is approximately equal to Now, if x is greater than u plus x and x is greater than u, because x is a positive number, it has to be the probability that x is greater than u plus x. I'm going to take this to the right hand side so this will become And this you can write as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to u plus x.
and because and this this you can write as one minus the CD F is the CDF of X at U plus X approximately equal to Now, in the, before I go to the next line, I'm going to make a substitution. So I'm going to make the following substitution. That's set y equal to u plus x. So under this substitution, the above line becomes 1 minus f at y, approximately equal to the probability that x is greater than u times 1 minus psi, x will become y minus u. Okay. And finally, you can rewrite this as fy approximately equal to 1 minus So this, this is, gives the distribution of x, right? And this formula here is known as the general, generalized Pareto distribution, or this is known as the generalized Pareto Right, GP for short distribution. Okay. All right. So, so I have, as I said, using from the last slide, I have, I have derived the distribution function of x as being given by this formula. Right. All right. Now, let me talk about the GP distribution in some detail. So, so the heading for this slide is the GP distribution. So a random variable X has the GP distribution. If it's CDF is given by the following. Okay, so where the support for the distribution is given by this inequalities. Right. And as I said before, there are two parameters. Sigma it must be positive and is known as the scale parameter. And psi can take any real value and is known as the shape, shape parameter. Now the notation 
The notation I shall use for a generalized pair to random variable is the following. It's GP in brackets, sigma, and psi. Alright, in the next slide, I'm going to talk about the domain of the GP distribution. So, domain Okay, so let's consider, consider the case where psi is greater than zero. So in this case, I mean, domain is the same as support. In this case, the, the inequality is defining the domain or the support uh, can be written as follows. Let me, let me show you. So these inequalities are EQ, equivalent to are equivalent to these inequalities and these are equivalent to because psi is positive you do not there's no need to change the sign and you should and you shouldn't right and these are equivalent to y being greater than u minus sigma over psi and y greater than u y and because sigma and psi are positive these two inequalities are the same are, is e are equivalent to the inequality that y is greater than u so hence the domain the domain of the gp distribution when psi is positive is from u to plus infinity Okay, now let's consider the case psi less than zero. In this case, these inequalities can be rewritten as as this. Because psi is a negative number, when you divide by a negative number, you, need, you must change the inequality around. Okay. Right. So it becomes less than And this is the same as saying that that y is between u and u minus sigma over psi. So hence, the domain of the GP distribution is from u to u minus sigma over psi. Okay. So when the psi is negative. And finally, we consider the case where psi is equal to zero. So when psi is equal to zero, the inequalities Right, this reduced to this being zero, the, everything is zero. So it's one plus zero greater than zero and y greater than u, which is the same as saying that y is greater than u. So hence, the domain 
of the GP distribution when psi is equal to zero is u to plus infinity. Okay. So hence we have shown the following. Hence the domain of The domain, the domain of GP is, is this if psi is greater than zero or equal to zero and is this when psi is less than zero. Right, so, so we have found the domain for the GP, right? Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the special case of the GP distribution. The special case of the GP distribution then the sh when the shape parameter is zero. So, so what I'm going to do is to find the CDF of of this. So, which means, remember that the CDF of a GP random variable is given by this. Right. Now, to find the CDF for this, you you can if you put psi equal to zero into this, you you will not get an answer. So what you need to do is to is to take the limit as psi approaches zero. All right. So and this you can write as one minus the probability that x is greater than u times the limit psi approaches zero of this. And this you can write as as the limit as psi approaches zero of one plus right now in the next before the next line, I'm going to make the substitution that m equal to 1 divided by psi. All right. So under this substitution, the above can be writ written as the limit as m goes to infinity, because as psi goes to 0, this goes to infinity. And this you can write as follows. Right. Now I'm going to use a result that I mentioned to you before. That if you have something like the limit as m goes to infinity of of this, then that is equal to E of Z. Uh, I mentioned this before. You may know this already anyway. So, right, so using this result, using this result, you can write the above line as
as this, right? And this becomes 1 minus the probability that x is greater than u of e minus this, right? And this you may, this may be familiar to you. This is actually the CDF of a shifted exponential distribution. Right. So what we have shown is that the, the exponential distribution is a particular case of the GP when the shape parameter is equal to zero. Right. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the density function or the PDF. Right, the density is of course the derivative of the CDF. This is you differentiate this you will get you will get the following all right so that's the density of the GP the next thing I'm going to talk about is the quantile function or the quantiles of the GP distribution. Now, you may recall that I defined what a quantile means, but let me, rec let me repeat it in case, just to refresh your memory. If x is a random variable, its pth quantile is defined by is defined by the following equation, right? Okay, so this is a solution of this equation. So if, if x is a GP random variable with parameters sigma and psi, then, then the pth quantile is, is defined by defined by this. So I'm going to solve this equation for xp, right? This is the same as writing okay. 
okay and finally this is you can express we write this as as an expression for xp is given by u plus sigma by psi in brackets you have this So this is the pith quantile of, of a GP of a GP random variable, right? In particular, if you put p equal to half, if you put p equal to half, you get the median. You get the median of of a GP random variable which is equal to the following. So if you put p equal to half into this, you will get All right, so that completes the quantile. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is the return level of a generalized Pareto random variable. Right. I mean, I defined what a return level is in, in when I talked about chapter, sorry, definition one. But let me let me define it one more time. That return level denoted by this x sub t is the level that. that will be exceeded on average once in every t years. Right, so it's the level that will be exceeded uh, on average, once in every two years. Now, let's go to this picture here. Um, now, this is a one-year period, and there are like 11 extreme values. Now, suppose, suppose on average there are m extreme values every year. I mean, little m. So, over capital T year period you will have m times t extreme values, all right? So the probability that a return level will be exceeded over a t year period is one divided by mt. You follow me? Because if you, if you suppose that on average there are m extreme values every year, over a t year period, you will have m times t extreme values. So the probability that a return level will be exceeded uh, once on average every two years will be, so what I'm saying is the following, that by definition, by this definition, which I have just written, right, the probability that x is greater than the return level is 1 divided by Mt because there are Mt extreme values over T a period, right? Where M denotes the average number 
of extremes or extreme values. Per year. Okay. So let, let me call this equation say plus or plus double plus, right? Then this the equation double plus is the same as it's the same as the equation that the probability that x less than equal to little x t is one minus one divided by m t. Right, which is the same as saying that this is the CDF of X which we know. Now, if you solve this equation for xt, this is what you will get. You will get xt equal to This is this is the return level, the formula for the return level under the GP distribution. Okay. Right. The next thing I'm going to consider is the estimation. So, because so far we talked about GP uh, distribution, but it's not going to be used useful unless we can estimate the two parameters of it, right? All right, so, so estimation Suppose Okay, suppose you have data x1 to xn which are iid from the gp distribution iid means independent and identically distributed so i'm going to use the method of maximum likelihood so the, the first thing you must do is to write down the likelihood function the likelihood function which is a function of just two parameters because we have just sigma and psi is the product i from 1 to n of the density function we derived the density function earlier which was this And of course, you can simplify this to to this. Right. 
So this is the likelihood function. And the next step for the, uh, for the method of maximum likelihood is to take the log likelihood function. So this is the log of the likelihood function. And then the maximum likelihood estimate is of sigma and psi uh, are the simultaneous solutions of solutions of the following. So first equation is the partial derivative with respect to sigma set equal to zero. And the second equation is the partial derivative with respect to psi equal to zero. So if you solve these two equations, you will get the maximum likelihood estimators for sigma and psi. Now I have I have worked out the two partial derivatives. They turn out to be this and this. So this is the partial derivative with respect to sigma. This is the partial derivative with respect to psi. And if you equate that to zero, let's call it equation one. Let's call this equation two. Then the MLEs are the solutions of equations one and two. It is not possible to solve them anal analytically, uh, so it ha they have to be solved numerically. But fortunately, there is a command in R software, which is called fpot, um, which can be used to solve the two equations numerically to obtain the MLEs for sigma and psi. Okay, so this completes definition two of extreme values, and in the next video I shall talk about definition three of extreme values.